Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the CDCP sneak peek provided by EPI. And my, uh, my name is Marco van Fink. Uh, I hope you're all having a pleasant day. And in the next 45 minutes, I'm going to talk uh, you through the CDCP highlights. And uh, 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 if you have any questions about this, I've already listed my email address. Uh, so please feel free to send me an email in case you have any questions about uh, this sneak peek or the training program provided by EPI. My name is Marco van Gink. I'm one of the trainers from EPI. I'm based in Holland, Europe. Uh, I have 17 years of experience based on IT data centers, uh, building, designing, redesigning, and I've operated uh, several data centers all across Europe. Um, now let's see uh, what's the agenda for today. Uh, first, we're, gonna, we're going to do a small introduction about EPI. Uh, we're going to talk about the DC training framework. Uh, then we're going to preview the CDCP course, Certified Data Center Professional course. Uh, this is about uh, 25 slides. Uh, and then we talk a little bit about the data center career planning tool that EPI has uh, uh, um, uh, released uh, one year ago. After the DCCP, uh, we are uh, having some questions. That we, you can ask some questions uh, either by chat through this uh, presentation or by email. Now, who is EPI? We are the biggest uh, training data center training company in the world. Uh, we've been founded in 1987 in England. We moved to Singapore in 1999, and we've been trying, training many, many people all across the world. We, uh, we have nine EPI offices, and we provide our, uh, our training program through our local partners in more than 60 countries all over the world and in more than 130 cities. So EPI is the data center expert company. Uh, we provide de a design evaluation and validation. So in case you are going to design a data center, or maybe you have designed a data center already, uh, we can review your design plans uh, and even match them uh, uh, to see if they are fit uh, to be audited by uh, uh, the TIA 942 uh, standards. We provide all that certification of uh, all data centers all across the world but based on the American TIA 942 uh, standards. And we provide a very extensive uh, training with very extensive train, uh, training program uh, with multiple different training, all uh, um, having a certain focus. And we'll see on the next slides uh, what's included in uh, this uh, training program. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Um, we have been uh, receiving many awards in the past uh, 30 years as well. Uh, we have been uh, awarded by the 20 most promising data center solution provider in 2015, 2016, and 2017. And we have always been, uh, also been awarded by the 20 most innovative companies to watch in 2016. Our CEO, Edward van Leen, is uh, named in uh, many, many different magazines, and he has been uh, 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 listed as the CEO of the month in June 2015. And we are also the official training partner for Ofcom and for the data center world. So uh, in many, many uh, pages listed on the internet, you can find our company name as well, and uh, also at LinkedIn. Uh, this is the training framework from, uh, from EPI. Um, we have three different scopes. We have the design build scope, uh, which uh, consists out of the CDCP, the CDCS Certified Data Center Specialist Training, and also the CDCE, the Certified Data Center Expert Training. We have an operations framework, uh, which is the CDFOM, Facility Operations Manager. We have the CDRP, the Risk Professional, the CDSM, the Safety Manager, and also the CDMS, the Migration Specialist. And the third scope will be the standards. Uh, which is the CTDC, the Certified TIA 942 Design Consultant course, uh, where, we, where we will be trained how to design uh, a data center purely on the TIA 942 standards. We also have the CTIA, the Internal Auditor course, and we have the CTEA, which is the External Auditor course for the TIA 942 standards. Today we focus on the CDCP, which is a Certified Data Center Professional. This is a two-day course. Um, it's being um, um, given all across the world in many, many, many different times, many times during the whole year, and this is a two-day course. If you pass for the CDCP, you can register for the CDCS, which is a three-day course, 
and then eventually you can sign in for the CDCE, which is a five-day course. Now let's have a look at the CDCP Certified Data Center Professional. This will be the agenda for the course. Uh, as I just mentioned, this is a two-day course, and this is a basically a very comprehensive course. It's, a, it's an overall course. We, uh, we talk about many, many different aspects of the data center and of operating a data center uh, um, uh, to, get you, to give you a better understanding about what's involved in running a data center and what are also the possible risks in running a data center. On the first day, uh, we have the data center standard that we will be referring to, which is the TIA 942 standard. We talk about the different constructions of the buildings with the pros and cons. Uh, we talk about race floor systems, electromagnetic fields. Uh, we talk about cooling infrastructure. Uh, we talk about fire protection and safety, uh, security and safety, and also cleaning uh, the data center. How do we clean the data center? And at the end of the second day, you can uh, uh, actually proceed with the exam, which will be, uh, um, uh, which will be checked by Exim. And uh, this is an um, uh, exam uh, that you uh, should be able to pass after following the CDCP course. Now, what's involved in this course? Um, this is um, one of the slides in the course uh, mentioning the data centers and the foundation of every organization. And uh, as we might know, the data center is one of the most important parts in running the business. Because if uh, part of the data center becomes unavailable, or maybe even the whole data center becomes unavailable, this will cause impact to your main business. Uh, and in many cases, uh, people don't know what is the cost of downtime. How much money would it cost in case the data center becomes unavailable for one hour, one day, or even five minutes? And in order to design a data center properly, we, are, we always have to ask ourselves, what's the cost of downtime, and what's the amount of uh, redundancy that we want to design, that we want to build? Now, the complexity of data centers obviously consists out of many, many different facilities that we need to have in order to operate the data center. And one of them will be the power distribution, uh, which is uh, the power transformer, but also the emergency backup power, being a diesel generator, for example. Uh, also, the UPS system is very important. That consists of multiple batteries. And in case there is a main failure, a power failure, then the servers should be able to, uh, should keep running uh, based on battery power. We talk about the different uh, uh, methods of power distribution by regular power cabling or maybe even bus bar trunking system. Uh, we talk about uh, access control, biometric access control, for example. We talk about water leak detection, cooling systems, fire extinguishing systems, and also lights. And all of these facilities are very important because if some of these facilities might fail, or maybe even one of the facilities, this will create impact to your availability, to the availability of your data center. Now, the bad news is there is no worldwide recognized standard. So how do we design the data center? Well, in many times, that's based on best practice. Now, there is some good news. We have a semi-standard, which is the TIA 942, the Telecommunication Infrastructure Standard for Data Centers, which has been expanded a couple of years ago with facilities as well. So it does mention a lot about UPS systems, diesel generators, but also physical distance from airports, um, uh, uh, um, uh, the stability of the building, construction, uh, the telecommunication, how to uh, set up and design your telecommunication network in order to reduce possible downtime. Now, site selection and location evaluation is definitely key. Where do we build our data center? Because if we build our data center next to a train road or to a highway or next to an airport, this will cause troubles. This might cause troubles because of vibration, uh, a contamination of the air, and for example, even a risk for a flooding. So we always have to uh, uh, find out what's the potential natural hazard. Uh, are we uh, installing the data center in an area uh, which is uh, uh, often experiencing lightning, for example? And lightning is dangerous because if lightning hits your building or hits somewhere near your building, then it will create a huge power peak. And this power peak might damage your IT uh, equipment as well or your UPS systems and so on. 
Flooding always is a risk as well, especially with heavy rainfall or during uh, season changes. Uh, if we have a lot of water, then it might flood our data center. Now, a typhoon is uh, obviously very important. Eh? If you are installing a data center in an area that is um, uh, a little bit risky for a typhoon, then obviously uh, this uh, will uh, create a lot of damage, but also forest fires. And think about the contamination that's being caused when the, uh, the forest is from in fire, basically. It's a lot of air contamination, and this might end up inside your data center. Now, potential man-made hazards. According to the TIA, uh, we should install our data center a certain distance away from the airport, but also a certain distance away from tunnels and lakes. Uh, the train airport we should stay away from because of vibration and also radio frequency towers because of electromagnetic fields. Industrial pollution, obviously, in every industry, that's definitely a spot that we want to uh, stay away from. And this is all being uh, being discussed and being listed in the CDCP in, in much detail because this is very important. Site selection is key. Also, the proximity evaluation to emergency services. Eh? Should we be installing a data center next to a fire station, for example, mm. or next to a medical facility? Well, that could mean uh, travels as well. Proximity to the neighborhoods eh, where people are living in urban area. How about the sound of your diesel generator? What about the noise of your cooling system standing at your rooftop? That this might cause issues. And then any uh, proximity to high-risk targets, such as uh, embassy, government buildings, television stations, eh, we should uh, definitely keep an eye out and we should think about whether we want to install a data center close to those high-risk targets or not. So convenience should not overrule security, obviously. Eh, it's quite easy to, uh, to enter the building easily, but security is key. Now, in the CDCP, we have many different slides about the load factors as well, because in the past we were using uh, server racks which had a UDL load. So basically the base of the server rack was standing on top of your race floor system and the whole weight of the rack was being equally divided over the area. Now nowadays uh, many server racks are being uh, provided with uh, small feet or casters. So we end up installing the server racks on top of our race floor system standing on four small casters wheels or feet. And as you can see in this uh, slide as well, uh, uh, loading the server rack with a weight of, let's say, 1,000 kilograms would mean that if you have four feet, every feet is uh, carrying 250 kilograms each. And this is a huge point load on your race floor tile. This might become an issue in the future as well, because in the past we only load about 500 kilograms in a rack maybe, but nowadays we see racks standing which, is, which are carrying 2,000 kilograms. So if we have 10 of those racks standing next to each other, then we can imagine that this uh, might uh, create a lot of stress on your raised floor system. In the CDCP, we talk about light fixtures as well. The amount of light is being expressed in a certain value. This is something that we have to remember in the CDCP. Uh, and obviously, we need to have sufficient light in order to do our job safely in, uh, inside the data center. So, at regular intervals, light should be located in all aisles, and there's one very important uh, uh, aspect on this slide as well. Those lights should not ever be connected to the IT static UPS system, and this might cause troubles in the future. And this is something that we focus on in the CDCP a lot. Now, some of the slides um, are uh, talking about power, power generation and also power distribution. This is a very important chapter in the CDCP consists out of multiple slides, and we follow the route from the power base and from source, as you can see at the left upper uh, part of the slide, all the way down to your building at a certain voltage. And power obviously is key, because if we lose power to our building, and if our diesel generators or backup power are not started and not working properly, then we will suffer downtime, and then uh, the uh, use cost will happen, obviously. Now, we talk about the redundant options, redundancy in our power distribution network inside the data center. In this example, uh, we have equipped, uh, uh, we have provided two UPS systems, uh, being one being spare of the other one, so we can call it an M plus one, depends a little bit on the capacity. And in this case, if one UPS system fails, then the other system should continue to work. 
so the IT equipment should not suffer from downtime. We have many examples in the CDCP talking about redundancy as well. This is another example based on rack level where we provide two separate power feeds to the server rack and we connect both power feeds to a static transfer switch which is uh, installed at the um, lower part of the server rack uh, which is an A and a B feed and it will create one uh, uh, feed to the IT equipment, both A and B. And in case the UPS A or the UPS B fails, stops working or needs to be maintained, then still the IT equipment will be provided by uh, power inside the rack. So this is one of the many different uh, uh, high availability examples that we uh, talk about and that we list inside the CDCP course as well. Now we talk about ground, grounding because grounding is very important inside the data center. Grounding and earthing both the same and uh, obviously grounding uh, will establish faulted references but it will also provide a lot of safety. Uh, think about lightning when it hits the building, then the power uh, running through the building should be guided to the ground as well in order to protect your IT equipment, your UPS systems and so on. So it should be able to carry lightning currents. The grounding needs to be of a certain diameter as well. And it will also provide an uh, uh, ESD discharge path. And this is a very important chapter in the CDCP. We have some values that we have to remember as well, the, the highest value or the lowest value, and also uh, what will happen in case power is uh, being transported through the grounding wires, and what will happen uh, to it in case it's too much, for example. We have to use a clean earth or ground for the data center equipment, and if we have any pollution sitting in the, on, the, on the earth or the grounding spot, then we should take appropriate measures in order to get it back to a lower value. Now, talking about power quality, we have another couple of slides coming up in the CDCP and uh, we talk about the uh, sinus of the power as well. And if we are uh, using um, well, maybe cheap LED lights or all the type of IT equipment or UPS systems, then harmonics or common mode noise might show up inside your electrical network uh, inside the data center as well. And this will have an impact to your IT equipment and also to the long-term reliability. So this is something that we talk uh, about a lot in detail and also uh, how to uh, prevent um, uh, harmonics or even uh, or how to decrease the amount of harmonics inside your electrical distribution network. Now we talk about two different types of UPS systems. In this picture we can see two different uh, systems. Uh, one of them is a static UPS system uh, which is being used in many data centers all across the world. And this basically consists out of two or even more cabinets. Inside one cabinet, there is a switch board, and there are some control logics installed, and some levers and some breakers. And inside the second cabinet, or many of the other cabinets as well, the batteries will be installed. We have many different types of batteries uh, that we talk about in the CDCP as well. Uh, they all have their own pros and cons. It depends on your initial investment. It depends on your ambient temperature on the lifetime, the life cycle of your batteries as well, uh, which system you should be applying for your business. Now obviously we can always discuss how much energy should we um, uh, keep inside our batteries uh, for the, how much time do we need to have autonomy time in order to run, uh, to run on the UPS batteries before the new generator kicks in. And this depends a little bit on the design and the application of your data center as well. An alternative for the static UPS systems uh, uh, could be a dynamic UPS system, uh, also called a, a DOPS or a DROPS unit, which basically consists uh, out of a diesel engine, uh, an alternator and dynamo being the generator, and also a flywheel. And the flywheel, the flywheel is continuously running. And by keeping it on its nominal RPM, it will provide a certain small period of time uh, of power give you an idea about that, a static UPS systems in many cases is capable of providing up to 15 minutes of power to your IT equipment, which is long enough for the diesel generator, diesel generator to kick in. Now a dynamic UPS system, the flywheel, quite often only has about 12 seconds of power. So uh, you can imagine that the diesel engine will kick in without one second and then be able to provide power back to your IT equipment. 
They, the both, uh, both have pros and cons. It depends again on investment, on TCO, on application, everything. And this is something that we talk about in the CDCP as well. Now, some of the uh, some of the slides talk about magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields, which is very important because in many many data centers, uh, uh, EMF is not being taken into consideration. Now, electrical magnetic magnetic fields are present when you start operating your data center, but uh, one of the two fields will increase by the time that you add more and more IT equipment and when you start to consume more power. Now, the more power you consume, the higher that particular field will become, and that might cause impact to your IT equipment or to your body as well. So don't underestimate the amount of EMF. Uh, it's wise to check your EMF radiation levels uh, at a certain particular uh, interval, maybe once a year, and uh, to uh, uh, see how you can decrease the amount of EMF. Now, as we can see in this slide, uh, if we apply shielded twisted pair uh, networking cabling, then it will not provide against EMF. Uh, many people uh, think uh, they do, but uh, the uh, standard shielded twisted pair cable does not protect against EMF, only alien cross talking. Now, there are many different uh, um, uh, solutions uh, how to uh, decrease the risk of EMF, and this is something that we talk uh, about in detail in the CDCP as well. Some are quite easy, and some are costing a lot more money. But doing the EMF review, doing the data center design is very important. Now, we talk about the many different racks in the CDCP. We talk about two post racks, which is the left rack, but we also talk about four post racks, which is the right one that we see in many data centers nowadays. In this case, the doors are made of safety glass, maybe. And this, this is not something that you see a whole lot. But nowadays, we see many doors being either perforated or uh, mesh doors. Um, so we can get a higher cooling capacity at that particular server rack. So this is something that changed in the past 20 years, uh, the type of cooling changed. And this is something that we talk about in the CDCP as well, but also the type of server racks that are being used. And obviously, we have them in many, many, many different set types. We have them in all kinds of colors. We have them in different whites. We have them in different uh, depth, different dimensions, different strength as well. And uh, obviously, this all depends on your application. Now, the principle of a race floor design, uh, this is something that we talk about in the CDCP as well, because many data centers uh, all across the world are using a raised floor design. Um, um, and in some countries, or some parts of some countries, we also see that uh, nowadays, uh, some designs are being made uh, being made without applying a raised floor system. Uh, so in that case, uh, the whole design is different, and then the cooling can no longer be distributed from underneath the raised floor, but it needs to be distributed inside the room itself. The pros and the cons between the two different systems, the raised floor design system uh, and the, well, basically, no raised floor design system uh, are being discussed and being displayed in the CDCP as well. And there are some interesting facts in this slide as well, because uh, if you look at the uh, look at the position of the elect of the AC system, then uh, obviously uh, this is in line with the um, with the server X. So this is uh, this is quite uh, important. Now, uh, for the uh, for the cooling, we have many different types as well. In this uh, case, uh, we have overhead duct systems uh, where we can apply extra cooling capacity inside uh, uh, corridors or aisles. In this case, uh, in this example, you see that the cold air is being dropped from the ceiling, and the hot air is being released through the ducts connected, uh, hanging on the ceiling as well. And there are many different types uh, 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 to apply, many different systems to apply in order to get more cooling capacity. And think about the data center that's being retrofitted in the past, uh, well, maybe five years or two years or 20 years, then cooling might become an issue. And if uh, cooling is becoming an issue, then there are several systems available on the market that you can apply in order to get more cooling capacity at a particular rack spot. So the overhead ducts obviously need to be well designed. Uh, think about the amount of air, because if you have too little air, then obviously the temperature is not leading anymore. 
if you have, if you don't have enough air, then it might cause hot spots as well. And also redundancy, because if we are going to apply anything uh, 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 such as an overhead duct system, and if the overhead duct uh, is being um, uh, serviced or maintained, or maybe it's not working anymore, then the redundancy uh, must be taken into consideration, because this might have a huge impact on the available cooling capacity inside that particular aisle. So for the rear door heat exchanger, this is a rack which has a rear door heat exchanger. This is one of the, the systems that can be applied inside your uh, server room as well. Um, there are several different systems, but in this case, um, you could think that this uh, kind of rack can be applied in a server room, which is not necessarily that big. Uh, so a fairly small server room. Uh, and then the cold air that's being provided uh, in front of your servers is being uh, uh, pulled through the IT equipment, so it's heating up, and before it's releasing, being released uh, from the server cabinet, it's uh, running through a rear door heat exchanger, and then it will be released as being cold air again, which can be uh, uh, reused at the intake of your IT equipment as well. Now, uh, if you look at the, the small lines, it's a blue line and a red line, and uh, obviously these uh, uh, heat exchangers need to be connected to some kind of cooling system as well. And uh, this could be a chiller, for example, and then it would mean that there's water running through that heat exchanger. Now, as long as everything stays, stays uh, whole, then this is good. But if the uh, heat exchanger starts leaking, for example, and this could only be a small leak or a huge leak, then we might have some water uh, damage as well. So water leak detection is definitely key when you're going to apply such systems. Um, again, there are many different systems available on the market. This is just one example. And the other ones will be uh, explained and will be displayed in the CDCP course. Now, do we have a hot aisle or cold aisle containment? That depends a little bit on uh, mainly construction of the building. Because um, uh, originally, many data centers are being designed with a raised floor system and a, a cold aisle contained area. So this is quite easy to implement in many cases. And by containing the cold or the hot aisle, it would mean that your efficiency level goes sky high. This will improve your efficiency a lot. Now, it does not necessarily have a big difference whether you are going to apply a hot aisle contained area or a cold aisle contained area as long as the cold and the hot airflow keep separated as much as possible. And this will create your high efficiency. Uh, this depends, this mainly depends on the construction of the building, but also the type of cooling system that you're using. And right? whether this is an AC uh, uh, DX system, direct expansion system, or a chilled water system, or a system with a water tower. And all these different systems will be discussed, will be displayed uh, in, and explained inside the CDCP two-day course as well. So this is quite comprehensive. Now we have a big chapter in the CDCP talking about the cabling system. Uh, where the structured versus on-demand system is one of the slides uh, where we uh, have to figure out what are we going to do. Now you can imagine that if you just sign up for your job and your main distribution area looks like the one at the left picture, well, you have quite a challenge uh, coming up because uh, uh, this will definitely take you a lot of time, uh, but also a lot of stress to get it organized, uh, such as the system that you see in the right picture. Now, they both have their pros and cons, uh, either using structured cabling or on-demand cabling. Uh, this depends on your business, it depends on your initial investment, but also whether you know what type of uh, bandwidth will be uh, used in the next five or ten years or so. So if you operate a data center for an enterprise, for example, uh, you have a more solid, detailed information about the technical systems being used, so you mm -hmm. might be able to apply structured cabling uh, uh, easier. Now, if you have a co-location system, uh, data center, then obviously you don't know what type of IT equipment will be installed tomorrow or next month or next year, and then in many cases, on-demand uh, cabling systems are being adopted. Now, you can also do a mix, uh, like a hybrid system, uh, because structured cabling is uh, often being applied uh, when you have to uh, 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 install a connection between two different server floors or server rooms, for example, from patch panel to patch panel, and then from there on, from patch panel to user, from patch panel to switch, for example, you can apply um, um, on-demand uh, cabling. 
And then you have many different cables for that, obviously. You're thinking about CAT 5E, CAT 6, CAT 7, fiber optic, single mode, multi mode, all kind of different connectors. This will all be explained in, in much detail in the CDCP. Now, for the sake of redundancy, uh, we have to cross-connect all the different systems to each other as well. Uh, this, is an, um, this is an example that you can see here. The network diversity and redundancy is definitely key. So in case one particular path or component fails in this setup, it might not necessarily uh, uh, hurt your company that much or not at all. So you can imagine that if you only have one fiber uplink cabling and the cable gets um, um, uh, cut, for example, during maintenance works or whatsoever, construction works, then obviously the data center will become unavailable. So if we set it up with a redundant route like, just like this, redundant uh, switches and routers, then the, the risk of downtime is fairly small. And there's a big chap uh, chapter, uh, this is a big chapter in the, in the CDCP, uh, uh, which is also uh, referring to the TIA, the uh, Telecommunication Infrastructure Standard for Data Centers, uh, which, uh, gives you uh, which gives you many, many detailed information about setting up a properly designed uh, network and also to keep it uh, nice and clean uh, during uh, the um, usage. Now, another important thing about running the data center, obviously, is fire detection and fire suppression. This is a, a fairly big chapter in the CDCP. Um, and part of the chapter uh, talks about the detection, uh, such as these systems, the sprinkler systems, uh, which is being uh, applied in many data centers all across the world. Uh, not necessarily because we like water uh, near our IT equipment, but in many cases it's uh, just uh, mandatory by law or maybe uh, because of the insurance company. Now this is a slow system because uh, in general these systems will only be triggered when the ambient temperature around that nozzle will, uh, uh, um, will uh, become 70 degrees Celsius or more. So in case of 70 degrees Celsius, uh, uh, basically uh, the sprinkler will, uh, will start going out water, and that's quite a lot of water. We also have the concealed systems, as you can see at the bottom, and these uh, concealed systems will basically pop, uh, pop out of your ceiling, or your concealed ceiling, at an ambient temperature of about 57 degrees Celsius, and it will only start releasing water when the ambient temperature reaches a level of 70 degrees Celsius. Now again, this could be uh, required by law, mandatory, mandatory for example, but um, we prefer to use different systems inside our IT environment. And one of these systems is called a VESTA system or an HSSD system. And this is something that we explain in the CDCP, which is a very, very good system. It's very sensitive, but also very reliable. And these systems can actually trigger your gas uh, fire extinguishing system as well. And in the CDCP, we talk about, about five different systems uh, containing gas in order to uh, basically kill the fire. And one of those systems is called the Novec 1230 system. Maybe you know it from white papers or from, uh, from um, articles on the internet. This is a very reliable system. It has some pros. It only has well, maybe one or two cons. But uh, compared to the other ones, uh, this is definitely a winner. Um, we talk about the pros and the cons of the system. It's a clear gas, which is very good. Uh, it's uh, quite easy to refill, uh, refill, but it's not necessarily very cheap. It depends on the size of your data center. If you have a data center which is, let's say, 1,500 square meters or bigger, or maybe even 1,000 square meters or bigger, then uh, another system uh, could be um, uh, uh, preferred. And this is something that we talk, again, in the CDCP. Now, <clears throat> Water leak detection uh, definitely is very not, very important uh, inside the data center as well because uh, it could be the case that our cooling systems are containing water or maybe water glycol mixture. And in case part of this system uh, starts leaking, then we need to be sure that the leakage is being detected and uh, that a signal is being sent to our building mon monitoring system or uh, our site engineer so the leakage can be checked and can be uh, prevent, uh, can be. Uh, uh, repaired as soon as possible because in many cooling systems water is being used. But also think about sewage. Uh, if we have any restrooms installed on top of our data center, in case we have our data center floor inside the basement, for example, then there's always a fair risk for water leakage as well. Also think about outside influences like rain, uh, rainwater. Uh, if we have any rainwater uh, coming through the roof or through the rooftops, and the sewage or the drainage system is not working properly, then it could 
create water leakage inside the data center as well. And we definitely don't want to have any water near our IT equipment or any equipment which can in power. Now security needs to be applied at three different layers uh, for the data center. One of the layers is the physical security and the other ones will be discussed in the CDCP course. And based on physical security, in many cases, we obviously apply CCTV or IPTV cameras. Now we can also apply fencing or walls or security guards. Depends a little bit on the size of your uh, company and also the importance of your data center, obviously. Um, and these CCTV cameras in this slide, they must be uh, of a certain uh, specification as well. They, uh, they have a certain minimum specification that need to be applied um, and then they are fit for purpose. Now obviously the recording needs to be taken place and we could decide to whether to install uh, or to re record the footage inside our, inside our server room uh, near the security office maybe or maybe at a third party or at a remote location in case something happens that we still have the footage. And this is a, a, a fairly big chapter in the CDCP as well. Um, and again, uh, we talk about three different layers of security, and one of them is physical security. Now, one of the final chapters in the CDCP, right before the exam, uh, would be uh, the cleaning of the data center. How do we clean the data center? And do we use a bucket full of water and just uh, splash it over the floor? No, most probably not, uh, for the risk of uh, IT uh, power. Uh, 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 to shut down or maybe even a uh, power electrical, uh, electrical machine, huh? that's definitely not key. So um, um, in many cases uh, we can, uh, we can uh, basically uh, sign in for a uh, dedicated company or we have a, the do-it-yourself principle. Uh, and in, every time when we walk on top of our data center we need to be sure that uh, if we see any plastics uh, uh, lying around or any zip ties or any other debris or contamination uh, we should be uh, uh, picking it up and take it off the data center because um, dust is uh, in many data centers uh, a huge enemy. So it's very important to keep all dust outside of your data center and uh, cleaning needs to be done uh, in a uh, regular interval. Now um, if you have uh, dark color racks like black racks for example, it's quite easy to see the dust lying on top of the rooftops of the ropes of the racks, but um, it's very difficult to, uh, to keep it out of your uh, uh, data center. Also the filters need to be cleaned uh, obviously every now and then. Um, and as you can see in this slide, that too much dust is an indication of a leaking data center. So we talk a little bit about pressure levels inside the data center as well. And if we operate a data center and the pressure is uh, at a certain level, then it will prevent dust from entering the server room as well. Now the professional cleaners are key because um, if during uh, cleaning the uh, reset button or the EPO button is being pressed in accidentally because uh, the company doesn't know what uh, that it's very important or that it should not be touched, then uh, this could create downtime for your data center as well. So uh, 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 be careful by selecting an external party to clean your data center and instruct them uh, very well. This is key. So uh, this was a, a small part of the CDCP. Uh, obviously the CDCP course is a two-day course. It's about 400 different slides, 400 pages. So it's very comprehensive, it's very overall, and it's definitely a very, very interesting course um, uh, because it uh, talks about every, well, many, many aspects of uh, running the data center. So both uh, uh, IT level wise as facility level. And obviously those two teams need to work uh, with each other. Now, uh, let me uh, uh, get uh, back uh, to that uh, in about uh, two or three minutes or so, because uh, in this slide you can see that uh, EPI released the DCPT, the Data Center Career Planning Tool, uh, last year. And uh, the DCPT can be, uh, um, um, can be accessed uh, through the website of uh, EPI. I will uh, provide you with, uh, with the link uh, after this course. And uh, this, is, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, because uh, if we can see, uh, that we can see on the slide as well, huh, a bit of the background, the data center operator and employees frequently ask our consultants for examples of job descriptions because uh, what's, uh, 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 what's involved with being a site engineer or what's involved with being a site manager, for example. Now, um, the, um, the DCPT gives you a very uh, good overview uh, about the competences that you need to have for your current job 
but also uh, for uh, maybe for the job that you want to grow to. So this is a very solid document. It's very comprehensive. You can download it for free. It's a web-based tool, basically. Um, and it will actually show you uh, which competences you need to have for your current job and which competence you need to learn in order to grow to a different job. Um, and obviously, uh, it's uh, easier um, uh, uh, to easy to use uh, to see which courses of EPI are uh, uh, interesting for you and uh, for your own uh, uh, development as well. Now, uh, as we can see over here, uh, <clears throat> there are guidance available to data center operators indicating what skills, knowledge, and competences are required to design, build, operate, and maintain uh, a data center. Now, uh, let's have uh, let's have a look at this one because the challenge is uh, which training should we uh, should we follow for the EPI? Well, um, by uh, applying for the DCPT again, this is a free tool. Uh, it will give you a good overview of which training you uh, fit for your job description, basically. It will create an, uh, a data center career plan for you. This is a, a personalized career plan. So you can see uh, uh, which competence uh, should, be, uh, should be learned, and you can sign up for these courses as well. Now, uh, it provides details for required training and to meet the competence levels, and it can also create as a good, uh, good tool for your HR manager, for example, to request some budget to train yourself uh, 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 to uh, basically the next level, uh, to, and to um, to uh, to uh, to get proof of your knowledge as well, because uh, it, sometimes it can be hard to get a budget. And uh, if you uh, sign in for the DCPT, uh, this could uh, definitely uh, help you out a little bit. I have to speed it up a little bit uh, because uh, I have about three minutes left for the the course uh, uh, for the sneak peek. So again, um, um, if you uh, sign up for the DCPT, uh, it will also include an appendix. Uh, from the DCCF data center competence framework, which can be uh, uh, found on our website as well. Um, and it will tell you again uh, which uh, training uh, uh, could be interesting for you in order to expand your knowledge and also to confirm it. Now, how can you use the DCPT? You can find it on our website, www.epi-ap.com slash DCPT. If you surf to this link, you can fill in your name, you can fill in your email address, and then everything goes from there. This is a free tool, uh, or it is sneak peek closest. Um, um, uh, I can ask, uh, I can basically answer some of your questions, uh, but uh, because for the sake of time, I would advise you to send me an email at marco at epi-ap.com with any questions that you have about the CDCP or any of the other uh, uh, EPI courses. Huh? Then we have some time to answer to your questions um, uh, uh, accordingly. Now have a look at our website, www.epi-ap.com. And again, feel free to, um, to ask me any questions by email. Um, you, can, uh, you can, if you have any questions right now, you can put them in the question screen as well. But um, uh, the time for this, call us an email uh, at sales at epi-ap.com or marco at epi-ap.com. I want to thank you very much for your time, for your interest, um, and I uh, 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 hope to see you in one of the next CDCP classes. Uh, we provide those classes. It's a two-day class. We provide them uh, in a classroom, but also virtually. Uh, so um, I trust. Um, and... Um, uh, I uh, hope to see you in one of the next CDCP classes. Uh, we provide those classes. It's a two-day class. We provide them uh, in a classroom, but also virtually. Uh, so um, uh, you can basically attend the classes from anywhere in the world. Uh, and we have a schedule listed at our website, www.epi-ap-ap.com. Thank you very much. And again, feel free to send me an email about any of our courses or anything uh, regarding this uh, CDCP uh, sneak peek. Thank you very much.